Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old, I'm David Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be reviewing Veil Wraith. So this is a solo game, although you can play with more players if you have additional copies, so for most people it's going to be a solo game. It was published in 2021 by Hall or Nothing Productions and was designed by Tristan Hall. Now, this game takes place in the same world as their Killforth games, like Gloom of Killforth and whatnot, which is a uh, kind of dark fantasy setting. So, in order to tell us a little bit more about this theme, let me take you to one of our fantasy experts. It is I, Count Bacula, here to tell you about the game of Veilwraith. In this game, the world has ended, but you will play as a Veilwraith going across the land to lead the lost souls to their afterlives, whether they be friend or foe. But you must also deal with deadly and dangerous enemies along the way. Well, that was a, that was a great description. I, I appreciate that, but uh, I'm kind of surprised we got you. I was expecting, uh, you know, the, the orc or the dwarf, you know, one of our, our fantasy guys. Ah, oh, yes. That is because, you see, I am the fantasy guy of many people. Oh God, really? You're just kind of you're kind of embarrassing yourself and, and kind of me. So um, let's just go to the gameplay overview. All right, so let me give you a brief rundown of how this game works. You're going to have your deck of memories, which are sort of all your various abilities. You're going to create the threat deck, which will have uh, various kinds of uh, creatures or people you have to overcome. They're not necessarily bad guys, but you do have to deal with them. And also in that deck, there's going to be uh, your foes, which are sort of like your boss creature for those, for that particular vignette. And there's going to be keys. There'll be five of them in there. And one of the win conditions is you get all five keys. At that point, this portal card that you set aside will come out, and then you have to basically defeat that. And if you do that, you win. If you go through the whole threat deck and you have to reshuffle it, you'll add the Archfiend card into there, and if that ever gets drawn out, you lose immediately. That being said, that doesn't happen too much. Now, you have three basic skills. They're Explore, Fight, and Influence. And you're going to place the cards with those skills on them beneath the number one, two, or three, which will be out in front of you. And that number is going to determine how powerful that particular skill is. When you use a skill, like let's say you use the one that's in slot three, then at the end of your turn, you're going to move that to slot one and move the others up. This is kind of similar to Arc Nova, if you've ever played that, where, you know, your, your most recently used card becomes suddenly weaker. You can also play cards from your hand that can boost those skills if you choose to use them. Uh, another thing you can do instead of using the skill, because you only use one skill per turn, is you could tilt one of those skills uh, 45 degrees, and then that'll allow you to put a plus one bonus token on it. And in a future turn, you could then spend that bonus token to get that plus one bonus. And basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the power level of one of those skills to match one of the cards you're trying to defeat. So maybe one of the cards says you need a five in fight to defeat it. So if your fight is on the number three spot, it already has three power, but you'll need to come up with two elsewhere, either by playing cards from your hand that'll boost your fight, or if you have a plus one power token on there, you can use those. Or you can also combine two cards in your hand to use the lowest power level of each. Now, I mentioned that uh, you're playing vignettes, so there's five vignettes in the box. You can just pick one to play if you like, but I kind of recommend going uh, through them one at a time. So starting with the first one and going on, because that's how you'll be upgrading your cards as you go. At the end of the, the vignette, you'll usually get some sort of a reward, and you can almost always upgrade one of your cards. So you can take one of your level one cards or move it from your deck and pick one of the level two cards to put into your deck. If you already have a level two uh, on the end of one of the vignettes, you could get rid of that one and add a level three card in there and go into the next vignette with those in there. Now you lose if you lose all 20 of your health, and also, of course, as I mentioned earlier, if that Archfiend ever does pop out, you lose immediately. So that's the basic gist of how you play. Let me get into my opinion on this game. So starting with the art and components, uh, I think that the art is really gorgeous on here. This, this company, Hall or Nothing, they always go all out on their art. I'm not sure if all their art is by the same group of people. I think there's three artists on this one. But uh, really beautiful art. Everything in the entire game is in black and white. 
and it sort of looks like they took like a nice painted style, much like they used in Gloom of Killforth. You know, made it black and white, made it just like slightly maybe blurry, and then used uh, and then kind of like outlined certain parts in black. I don't know if that's what they do. I'm no kind of an art expert, but that's kind of what it reminds me of, and it is very striking and and cool to look at. Uh, the tokens are all nice quality. Um, one thing I did notice though, and this is like from the very first time I played, a few of the cards have like little tiny like scratches on them, and you really notice it in these guard in these cards when they're primarily black. You can really see those little um, scratches, or I don't, even, I don't even know if it's really a scratch, like there's this little part where it's like worn or there's been a, a ditch put into it. It doesn't have a gameplay at all, but these are tarot sized cards and if you want to keep them intact, I think you might want to get sleeves from them if you can find a good sleeve. I haven't tried to look for a sleeve for this side card, but I think that any kind of a, a scratch or anything like that is going to show up a lot more on these cards that are almost entirely black in a lot of cases. So that's something to keep in mind. But other than that, I really have no complaint about the components whatsoever. I think it's all uh, really pretty. Okay, so for the theme, the world is basically ended. It's, you know, it's in this dark fantasy world. And you're now this, this spirit, this veil wraith, going around trying to send people off into their afterlife, I suppose, or get rid of some of the threats that still remain in the world. So, you know that story is there. It doesn't feel like it's very strongly there in the game. Like, I like that, you know, certain characters, you're not using a fight to deal with them. You know, you're trying to influence them to go away. That makes sense. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have to come up with a lot of the stuff in your imagination if you want the theme to be there. Even if you go through the campaign, the, you know, the five vignette campaign, there's really not a narrative going on. You know, you do one vignette, there's a little blurb on the, the back of the vignette card, and uh, I mean, it's it's interesting, but it doesn't really tell you a lot. You go on to the next one, you have different monsters and, and whatever to fight. Um, there's not really a big story here, which is kind of a bummer. I wish they would have incorporated more story into the game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the theme is, is cool. It's a really interesting idea. It doesn't come out that much in the game, to be honest. It doesn't seem like, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to make this a very narrative experience, uh, unfortunately. All right, overall thoughts. This is a really quick playing game. I think you can usually play in a half hour. I mean, you have to set up, but once you get going, especially once you've you learned it, which doesn't take too long because it's not very heavy at all, you can kind of go through pretty quick. And part of that, though, is because there's not a lot of really deep decisions to make. I mean, I, I'm not going to say there's there's no decisions, but, you know, you can decide to upgrade this ability or another one for, uh, for a turn. You can decide you're going to get rid of, you know, this bad guy or that bad guy, although often it's pretty clear which one you want to get rid of if, if you have the choice. You know, if it's going to do more damage to you, you want to get rid of it. I mean, obviously, if you can only get rid of one, then that's the one you're going to get rid of. So... The choices are there, but they're not very big choices. They're not very hard choices. Um, so I feel like in a lot of cases, uh, this game is very luck heavy. You know, if you get out a good card that's going to help you at a good time, then you'll be okay. If you don't, then you're not going to be okay. And that's just kind of how it is. You know, um, you can decide like, okay, I know there's a lot of uh, threats in this vignette that, that will need fights, so you can try to make sure that's always boosted, which is great, but you're also going to need to make sure you have your explorer boosted, because that's how you get the keys. There's really nothing you can neglect, I don't think, in any of the vignettes. So, it, it really does come down to, does the card come out that's going to match the thing that you have powered up? And if not, you're going to start taking a lot of damage, and it's, it's pretty quickly downhill from there. Now, I don't necessarily mind that in a game of this length. Like I said, it probably does take about a half hour, so not too bad, but I do wish there were some more deep decisions to be had here. Another thing, if you look on the back of the box, it says that this is a game with deck building elements. That's a stretch. I mean, yeah, I guess sort of technically, but the only thing you're really doing, because, you know, usually in a deck building game, you're, you are starting with a basic deck and you're building it up as you go throughout the game to get more and more cards that will come up more frequently to be more helpful to you, etc. And in this game, it's not so much like that. Like, you're going to go through a vignette with one set of cards. At the end of the vignette, you're going to basically upgrade one card and put in a new one. So you're talking about a very tiny change from one vignette to another. I mean, it can make a difference, don't get me wrong, but it's not this earth-shaking thing where you've like totally revamped like a bunch of your deck like you would in a deck building game. It just, it doesn't in any way feel like a deck building game to me. If, if that hadn't been on the back of the box, it would have never occurred to me that this is a game with deck building elements. I think calling it that was a bit of a push. And honestly, that made it really kind of disappointing to me in a way. You know, I was expecting more of a deck building game. I love deck building games, as you may know if you watch this channel a lot. It's probably my favorite mechanic. And here it is so 
barely there, and I think it's an incredible stretch to say that it's a deck building game at all, that um, it was like, oh man, okay, I was, I thought I was going to get this thing that I really love, and it's like, if you squint and look at it from a mile away, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's got it, but not really. So that's kind of a bummer. I do like that the different uh, threats and foes that you can have in each vignette uh, can feel really different and have different effects on the game. That being said, I wish there were more of them, more different creatures, and more vignettes too. Like like five. Um, I mean, it's going to take you, you know, two and a half hours or so to get through that. And probably a little more because you'll have to set up in between. But they don't feel that incredibly different. And I wish there was more variety. I wish you had like. Um, a set of cards that you always have in a given vignette, but then there were maybe some other ones that you could have randomly that would make it kind of more interesting and make, you know, each time you play that one vignette feel significantly different. That would be great. Uh, you know, I, I just, um, I think that the one vignette to another can feel somewhat different. Overall, the game is going to probably feel kind of samey because once you've been through one vignette, you know kind of what you need to do to prepare for that, and then you just kind of have to hope that it works out. I will say this, this is one of those games, a lot of people complain about this, that when you get it, and you get the components out, you're going to realize those components take out take up about a quarter of your box. Really, it's not much. You have a little spot for the, the, the cards, you have your dividers. It's really nice to have the dividers. They have the dividers in for the expansion that I think came out at the same time because I believe this was on Kickstarter. I just got it direct from the company. Um, but, um, but yeah, so it has some space for those, and I, I imagine space for future expansions, which is fine if that's a plan. I think that's a, that's a good way to go. But some people get really irked when they get a game, and it's like this you know, big, big box compared to what you get in it. Uh, so there's that to consider. Um, but, uh, you know, in general, I think that even though there's not a, a ton here, I think just for the art quality alone, like it probably justifies that price. But I think there's going to be some people who maybe don't feel that way. All right, so final score. You know, I'm a really big fan of Gloom of Killforth. I, uh, I, back to the other two Killforth games, which will be coming at some point. I don't really know when that's supposed to arrive. I really like that game. It's 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 got a lot of depth. A lot of cool things happen to you in the game. It feels very thematic. And this being in that world and promising to be a deck builder, I was really excited about this one, too. It looked really cool. But, as I mentioned earlier, the first strike is it, it's... I just... I could not call this a deck builder. I, I, I can vaguely see how it has the elements, but it's not like a deck building game. It's just not. So you got to get that out of your head first off. And then because of that, because you don't have the luck mitigation that comes from actually building your deck throughout the game, it just feels very, very luck dependent. It, it's, I mean, heavily so. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenging game, which is fine, but when it is so heavily luck dependent, you're just kind of like hoping and praying for the best possible combination of cards. You have enough decisions in there that I could say it's not totally random, but it's still really random. Like, you don't know what's going to come up, so it's hard to know what to prepare for. You're kind of hedging your bets and hoping it works out. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, you're going to lose that vignette. You know, if you go through the uh, the campaign, you basically have five these five uh, silver ribbon tokens. And so anytime you lose one of the vignettes, you, you remove one of those, and then you have to play that vignette again. And so you basically have five lives, essentially. And I could see that being frustrating the further you go into it. If you lose because you just had really bad luck, that's a bummer. The other thing that's kind of frustrating is that some of the cards that you can upgrade to seem clearly meant, uh, at least the, the skills on them seem clearly meant for having multiple players. Like it'll be, you could do something to one of the other players and it'll have something else, but the other thing is not that impressive on its own. And I just don't think it's really likely you're going to have two people with this game in the same place very often. I mean, if you and your friends go in on it together, maybe you will. But uh, I don't know if this is going to have the broad appeal that you're going to just bump into people who have this game sitting around. I just don't think it's likely. So those cards feel kind of like a bummer. Like I feel like a lot of those cards are not great choices when you do uh, get to the point where you can upgrade them. So... I don't dislike the game. I do enjoy playing it. It has its fun. I don't mind that it's uh, kind of random in some ways because it's so short. But that being said, um, I do wish there was more luck mitigation and that would come from it actually being a deck building game, which it is not. So I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. You know, I'd, I'd happily play it again and I, I think I probably will. But uh, I do feel a little burned by thinking this is going to be something that it's not because it says it's something that it's not. It, it says it has elements of it, but 
I mean, you could technically say that of any game with a card, so I don't think that... I, I just think they should have left that off entirely. And, uh, you know, honestly, all things being equal, I will, every single time, pull Gloom of Killforth off the shelf and play in this world through that, then I will play through Veilwraith and play in the world there. It's just a much deeper, more exciting game, and this one just feels like a, a puzzle where you may or may not have all the pieces that you need. So, that's my overall thoughts on it. Uh, if you played it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. Tell me if, if I'm missing something. By all means, let me know. But uh, those are my thoughts on this particular game. If you want to get something in that world, any of the Killforth games are fantastic. They just take a little bit longer and a little bit more rules overhead to learn how to play them, but well, well worth it. But yeah, so in the meantime, 6 out of 10. That's my score. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Hi, everyone. We now have a merch store, so help out the channel and check it out. Yeah, all these games and the equipment and everything we do and costumes cost a lot of money. So anything you can do to help us out if you love our content would be really appreciated. We have t-shirts in tons of different colors and styles. We have sweatshirts in a few different styles. We have lots of stuff you can drink out of, like coffee mugs, pint glasses. We also have uh, coffee tumblers and water balls and a few other things. Right, so. The following announcement has been paid for by A-G-N-O. Hey y'all, check it out, brand new shirt. It's not just black, it's black and white. Get one today. You can get it with or without for everyone on the back. You want something to drink? Is it Thirsty Thursday? That's what that means, right? We got something for your morning? Check that out. We got something for your day? And you know we got something for your night. Get your drink on with that. Get a little cold outside? Check out this premium hoodie. Damn, that looks good. You wanna look good? You need this hoodie. What's that? You want a little color? Don't worry. AGNO has got you covered. You don't like purple and red? Don't worry, there's plenty more. Just check the store. All these clothes, not too big, not too small, just too sweet. Don't forget, all games new and old is for everyone. The preceding announcement was paid for by AGNO. So yeah, that's how you can get pretty much any Kickstarter at the All In Pledge level for free. So when you saved all that money, make sure you go to our merch store, spend some of that same money to help us out. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. It was published in 2021 from Hall or Nothing Production and from Hall or... Whoop. Wow. <laughs> Going across the land to... S what am I doing? I don't know. Jesus. And that's it. Oh, okay, wait. Hold on. A little bit more. A little bit more. If you enjoyed that video, you might also like this one. Or this one. If you like any of our videos, what you should do is click this little button to subscribe so you'll know about the next time we put out a video. We'll see you around the table. Bye. Bye.